So guys, today's video is going to be a little different than the usual videos. Today we'll talk about something called vectors reserve function and why it is important. So, and yeah, basically for this, you should know like how vector works. So if this is vector integer V, we all know that we can do V dot push back and it will keep on inserting the elements into this vector and it is a dynamic array. But what we are going to discuss is why going like that is not a good idea. So let's say you have some number X, maybe this much. So you want to loop for this X time and insert V dot push back, whatever the number is, maybe zero to this many times, you're just inserting that I inside this. So this I is going from here to here. So basically you're looping and trying to insert from zero to what is this hundred thousands. So you are going from zero to hundred thousand times and just pushing that many values into this vector. Doing this way is not the good way. And let's see why it is not good way. So basically how vector actually works, how the dynamic array work is inside this vector, you should know that, okay, it has the array itself. So you have a vector class inside this, it is maintaining a template vector, I mean array. So there is an array here. We are clear this array, let's say ARR. Okay. Now, when you say push back, initially it is not having any value. So you will say push back for the first time. It will keep this array size, let's say for just for two elements for the beginning. So what happened is it created this array with two elements. You inserted zero for the first time and you still have one place. You inserted one here. Now vector is full. I mean, this array is full. The moment in this loop, you will go for third time. Let's say two, there is no place. Then there is no place in this array. The problem is it has to accommodate that element. What it does is it just create another array out of this. And this time it creates the double of this. So before it was two, now it is four. So after doubling the size, it will just copy this two elements just like this and insert the third element. Let's say two was your third element. And then you happen to insert three also. Now again, it is filled. You will try to insert four here. Bam. It again has to double the size. Now you might be getting the picture here. Why this looping is not so good because this zero one two three will come as it is here. And there is a cost of copy because you have to bring the data from old array to new array. So that copy is also involved. It's not just asking the memory from heap. So zero, one, two, three, now four, five, six, seven inserted. Now you are done. You will again double this and you will keep on doubling till you insert this number. I mean, these many numbers. So you see, this is not quite an efficient way to do it. So not only in programming competition, in projects also, in your college project, in your company project, if you somehow can find that number in programming competition, you can definitely find that number because they explicitly mention that, that, okay, this N will go from zero to maybe thousand times or hundred thousand times. So you can just blindly reserve these many element location in this array. And then you just keep on pushing. I mean, there is no copying and nothing is happening here. So this is pretty fast way. So how you do that? After creating vector of integer V, you just say V dot reserve that X number. Now this was a happy part. I know you guys, I mean, there are many people who will be thinking that dude, we are not always going to use maybe hundred thousand times. So why to waste that much of memory? So let's say outer iteration goes for Let's say, I don't know, uh, this is Y iteration. So outer loop, this will go from zero to hundred, let's say, and then there is an inner iteration, which will go from zero to this number thousand, hundred thousand times. Now the possibility is that this X may vary. So it's like sometime it will be from zero to hundred. Sometime it will be zero to like 20,000 or so. But then you will say that, okay, for each and every hundred iteration times, you will end up creating or reserving a very big or relatively big memory and you're just using it for few times. Now here comes the trade-off. So if you are working on a project or system where 
you are okay to run little slower i know i mean we are in a very computing efficient world right now so i know computers are so fast but if you will use this you will definitely see the results so even if milliseconds but it is important right so as i was telling if your point is if your project or whatever application you are working on if you can sacrifice speed over the memory because sometimes you have to create applications in such a way that they are taking very less memory but it's okay if they run little slower because they are not working on real time scenarios like they are not playing a video or something like that so i hope you would have got the point so in that case you can ignore uh, this reserve thing but if you are someone who can ignore the memory usage like i don't care about the memory i have like so much of memory in my computer or users of my application will definitely have this much memory then i would recommend using this reserve you are never going to regret and at least in programming competition there is no other go you have to use it so i'll sum this video here thanks for watching guys and yeah let me know how did you feel about this video if you really didn't know this then i deserve a comment thanks for watching guys i'll see you in the next videos bye bye take care